okay, for those of you that just showed up, yes, you can. Uh, there will be a presentation and then an optional field trip after. Um, if uh, you'd like to go on the field trip, you can get into this um, um, by going to the URL that Shan just put in the um, uh, local chat. I would, however, recommend uh, that you go to sign.space and sign up for a free account and download uh, their software. I tried it this morning, and I can tell you the software works a lot better than the web browser. Okay, first of all, thank you all for coming. And my name is uh, Bill Schmachtenberg. Uh, everybody knows me as Day Miami in Second Life. I'm a well, I'm a high school earth science teacher um, in Southwest Virginia, and I also run um, a geology program at Farham College. So I do sort of two levels. And um, first thing I want to say is thanks to everybody that showed up. And what's really cool that I've noticed because I've been on all morning is that we've got some people here are diehard science circle folks. We've also welcoming uh, a number of people from Science Base that are greeters. I see Captain Pirate um, and uh, Galen here, who I've known for many years, who's another educator. Um, and I hope I haven't let anybody out. But um, thank you all for coming. So um, let me start with the first slide here. And I want to go over my uh, procedure, which is basically um, feel free at any time to throw anything you want in uh, local chat. I'm monitoring it. I don't have a problem at all stopping what I'm saying and answering your questions or trying to address your comments. I think that that is a great way um, to run. I always run my presentations so that I allow time for questions and answers uh, because uh, that's that's what I want to hear from you guys is, is feedback. Um, and the first thing also that I want to say about this is um, science space is exciting. exciting. Some hello, here. hello. Hello, is somebody else talking? Uh, what I'd ask is if you have a question or comment, please put it in local chat. Do not use voice at the request of um, Science Space. Okay. Um, but like I said, I'll be happy to address your comments and questions as we go along. All right. So uh, let me explain why I put this presentation together, because it's not our sort of typical um, presentation that we do here, which is uh, for an expert to come up and talk about the latest research in chemistry or biology or geology or whatever. Um, instead, this is more of a technology presentation. And as you can see on the slide um, that should be resing for everybody, um, Obviously, virtual worlds and online collaboration is, is something that's important to all of us. Whether we're at Science Base or whether we're part of the Science Circle, we understand that this is the way that business should be done in the 21st century. Um, and there are also, I would say, experts at the Department of Education, at least here in Virginia, that have already penned um, technology standards for students here in the state of Virginia at the high school level. If you can't read, I'm going to read this out to you. It's Computer Technology Standard CT 9-12 grades C. It states students will participate in online courses, social and learning networks, and, and virtual worlds. The, that language is actually in the standard. Um, furthermore, 9-12.16C uh, states that uh, students will participate with peers and experts to assess their projects and use communication media to locate those experts. Um, I put the website up there if you want to take a look at it, but I think those are some amazing stands. And they're not new, they've been around for years. Um, the real question is, how do you implement them? And I've been all over the state of Virginia asking um, educators, technicians, and so on as to, um, you know, what do you mean by a virtual world in that language? How do you do it? Um, I think probably the best answer I've gotten is Minecraft. And this is certainly um, one of the more popular programs that's out there. Um, you know, if you've ever, if you haven't been to Minecraft, basically what it is is think of Legos online with your friends and you get an infinite number of them. So if you look up there on the slide, it shows you I built just a simple lava field 
around, it's supposed to be granite, uh, in one project that I did with uh, VISTA, the Virginia Society of Technology and Education. And elementary school kids love this. They're doing some amazing creative work in it. And there is uh, a chat feature very much like we have in Second Life here. Uh, there's no voice capabilities or Vibox. Uh, typically, people that are in Minecraft use Discord when they're doing that. All right. Um, so there is one option, and it's very popular in Virginia Beach. They run their own servers, and they get students and teachers into it. Um, years ago, my students came to me, and they said, um, all right, we got a question from uh, Synergy. What's the advantage of doing virtual Legos instead of real-life Legos? Um, you get an infinite number of them. Uh, the cost of Minecraft is only 26 bucks. Um, and you get to do it with your friends. And yeah, there is an advantage to building real life stuff, but um, kids love Minecraft. I've got some high school students that love Minecraft. Um, it's just popular and it's available on all kinds of consoles and Game Boys and it just runs on just about everything. All right. So anyway, my students came to me and they said, can we do it in my school district? And the answer I got was a firm no. Um, I was told that in order to run a Minecraft server, you have to give out the IP addresses. The network engineer almost had a heart attack at that. He said, there's no way that we're giving out our IP addresses. That's just going to open us up to all kinds of security issues. The software costs 26 bucks to get into. Um, and um, students were taking their software that they had downloaded, paying the 26 bucks and throwing it on school servers. So there was copyright violation it just wasn't pretty so needless to say they never got passed all right um let me go back one i know what some of you are going to think about well what about second life i mean we use it all the time um and it certainly is a great um platform for i think professionals getting together like we are now to discuss a wide range of topics um i'm not a fan of using it for k-12 because of a couple of things, and the one that you all know what I'm talking about by adult content. Um, it's out there and it's easily accessible to students and there's no age verification anymore. Um, and I've even tried using it at my college. Um, every year I go up, every year I throw up Second Life and I said, who'd like to come in? The last time I did it out of about 25 students, I got one student into Second Life and did a great job, but most students just aren't interested. And I think part of it is the complicated interface. I mean, if you look at your viewer right now, look at all the menus and buttons and so on. Um, it's just, for somebody that's coming in, it can be overwhelming. Um, so I've tried to look for other possibilities. And, and you know me, I'm a huge fan of Unity. And a couple of years ago, um, a number of people came to me and said, why don't you check out SignSpace? You already love Unity, and uh, what you can do is create in uh, Unity, which is um, an editor, and then you upload it to um, ScienceSpace. And we have a question from Farin. Am I saying it right? What about alternative viewers? So are you talking about OSM or I'm not sure. Can you be a little more specific? Because I know some people have had luck with OS Simulator and schools. And I'm not here to, if you've got your favorite virtual environment to use with students, by all means use it. Um, I'm not here to say that, that you know, you definitely have to use science Base. I want to give you an alternative. And um, like I say, I'm not sure which one you're thinking of. I know, like I said, OSM has been used for a while. But um, I'm, in a minute, I'm going to go over why I'm so excited about science Base. And I'll be honest, I resisted it for a while. Um, I had to play with it for a while, um, but eventually I got uh, to the point that I really like it. Uh, the real big advantage, and I think why Science Base could really take hold in the educational community, is easy access. You know, you can log in with a simple website, literally, and that's what Chantel threw out, is, um, um, you know, you just type in whatever is sign.space slash location slash uh, Eagle Rock, and if you've got a fast enough internet, and, and let's be honest, those of you that are educators out there, how many of you have asked, gee, why are we wasting all this bandwidth on standardized testing? Okay, that bandwidth 
that we're not using it for standardized testing could be used for a cool tool like ScienceBase. Uh, because if you've got fast internet like I do at my school, um, access via the web browser is really fast. And if you hardwire, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute, into that internet, man, it goes blazing fast. So um, that's what I like about ScienceBase. You don't have to sign up for an account if you want to try it. You don't have to download software. Um, and right behind me is um, a screenshot from uh, the Europa Sim that we're going to be going to in a little while. And, um, you know, you, you see that there's much fewer buttons. There's a couple of tabs at the bottom, and that's about it. Navigation is the same as in Second Life, as we're going to see with the arrow keys and so on. And good question. Is Science Space more moderated? Um, I would say yes. Okay, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Hold on, you're a little bit ahead of me here. All right. One thing that I want to say here is if you're planning on using the web browser interface to get in on the optional field trip, you can. You'll have chat capabilities, but not voice. Vivox does not work, unfortunately, on the web client. You have to use the, um, the software download. All right. Um, so like I said, if you haven't done so, I would encourage you to go to sign.space in a browser, sign up. Uh, click the sign up button, download the software. Um, again, this is optional. You can go in as a web uh, browser. Uh, I'm hoping this presentation lasts no more than 30 minutes, and then we'll head into um, Science Space. Some of you have already been in there. I see some of you already in there now, which is awesome. All right. Um, okay. So let me say a little bit more about Science Space. Um, some of you know about um, Cindy Valero. On Second Life, she ran Aeropines Park. And um, this slide shows uh, a picture taken at Aeropines Park on Second Life. And what she did was redo it with um, ScienceBase. And one of the advantages of ScienceBase is that they have something called the questing system. So, for example, you can interact with NPCs, uh, non player characters. You can tell people, all right, go pick up 10 snowballs in 30 seconds. So you can make little games out of it. Um, there's rewards that you can put in uh, to the questing system. And in fact, one of my students, I'm going to talk about in a minute, Bailey Paxton did that for her Europa simulation. So you'll get a chance to see how that's actually done with education. All right. Um, but before I get ahead of myself, uh, a number of years ago, Cindy came to my uh, computer group and she made a presentation on Skype and said, um, we'd like to challenge you to come up with a space research colony on another planet or moon um, using Unity. And most of my students just bailed on it. But Bailey Paxton was one that was interested in making a colony and worked on it for an over a year and just finished it in May of 2018. And we uploaded, it's been uploaded to the creator server and also uploaded to, um, uh, the live region, uh, if you want to take a look at it. Uh, for those of you that are looking for it, um, it's called FCHS Space uh, uh, Space Colony, all right? And the other one is FCHS Eagle Rock, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, uh, one of the things, um, although Bailey created it, I was the one that uploaded it because um, I wanted control. We're going to talk about network security in a minute. But I firmly think that teachers should be in charge of actually uploading it. There is some, it's technically difficult for the first time you do it. it took me about two hours with help from Joey Obama. Uh, but like I said, I think that teachers need to be able to control it. And I'll speak more about that in a minute. All right. So anyway, this is what the Europa Research Colony looks like. Um, basically, Bailey put out a series of uh, buildings that were designed for, um, for um, either living quarters or research. And we got another question, is Sansar still a thing? Um, it is. I have tried Sansar. I've got uh, Oculus Rift system, so I have big hopes. To be honest, I wasn't a big fan. If you're interested in Sansar, um, I encourage you to look into High Fidelity. Um, which I think is a, is a better system. Again, I haven't been in those a lot, and it's really best if you got a high-end uh, VR rig. Um, but I think that would be a better way to go. 
right. And one of the things that's a lot of fun, you can get vehicles in sign space. Um, the blue thing is what we call our war wagon that you can jump inside and drive around on Europa. And for fun, we also try driving around in some snowmobiles on Europa. Uh, those people inside a building, I don't know, why are they not wearing? Good question. All right, um, that uh, Synergy is asking because the atmosphere pressure is really low. Um, this was on the um, creator server, and we couldn't get EVA suits on there. Um, and uh, then when we put it on the live server, there is an EVA suit that you can put on when you get to Europa. So it's just another Second Life. Um, it is a virtual environment like Second Life. It has a lot of the functionality to it. Um, I would disagree in saying it's just another Second Life. Um, one of the things that people are working on is trying to come up with a K-12 um, grid server. And I know Second Life had a team grid that didn't do so well. Um, we're trying to revive that on Second Life. Like I said, we're hoping that this takes off because it's just a lot easier for um, teachers and students to get into because of the WebGL interface. To my knowledge, Second Life has never been accessible in a web server, uh, on, in a web browser. And to me, that I think can make all the difference in the world because I'm going to be honest, I'm a teacher. I'm overwhelmed. If somebody comes to me and says, oh, I got a great idea, but you got to download software and you got to get an account and all this stuff. I'm going to say, I don't have time for that. On the other hand, if they just send me a URL, I'm more likely to go into it. So that's what the hope is. I'm going to say more about that in a minute. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about the way that ScienceSpace is set up. Right now, they have two servers. They have what's called a creator server. Um, which allows people to come in and throw up their stuff and play around with it. And then there's the live server, which has more open access to it. If you create an account on ScienceSpace, you only get access to the live server. Um, guest accounts um, can get you to the live server for free, but to my understanding, they don't work on the creator server. If you want to be a creator, um, you have to supply an email. It's got to be verified. There's some other information you have to give through ScienceSpace. It's not terribly hard, so if you're interested in creating for this platform, I would encourage you to look into that. Um, like I said, creator servers used for testing, and what you do is um, send it to review, and eventually uh, it gets approved and sent up to the live server. All right, and that's a mistake. Europa Colony is currently available on both. Uh, whoops, I clicked it too far. On the creator and the live server. Come on. All right, now where we're at. All right, so we did the Europa project, and then towards the end of the school year, I had a student interested in geology. So we decided to do an Eagle, an Eagle Rock project, a geology simulation. And um, there actually is an Eagle Rock, Virginia. So I went there and took this picture of Eagle Rock. It's a spectacular cliff in Virginia with this rock that's above it. And um, the geology is just amazing there. So what we wanted to do was to try and reproduce it as much as possible in terms of the geology and the fossils and so on. And when you log in, this is what you're going to see. Um, there's a, a welcome sign. There's the chat. There's my 2008 Chevy pickup. We were able to reproduce that. Yes, if you click on it, you can actually drive it around. Now, the networking is a little funky. So if, if you drive your truck around, others are not going to see it because the truck is not fully networked. Um, but you can certainly drive around and get out. Just be careful. If you get out and you walk away from it, the truck goes away. All right. Um, but the idea is when you go here, there are rock samples. You click on them, and it, ta it teaches you about uh, what kind of rocks are there, what kind of fossils are there. Um, we have UV mapped actual textures from Eagle Rock on a lot of the cliffs uh, here so that you can get a feel for what it's like to actually do that in Virginia. All right, so when you click on it, here's an example of a UI that pops up. Um, it shows a fossil uh, that is found from this particular area. Um, here is a shot in screen of the James River Bridge. Um, which is a replica of what's actually in real life, uh, looking towards Eagle Rock. And the cool thing is you can fly around. Just like in Second Life, if you press down on your page up uh, button, you can fly around in uh, Science Space, which is really cool as a geologist, I can tell you. 
Eagle Rock is actually about 90 feet or 30 meters tall. And I stood at the base of it and um, wondered what it would be like to go up there. And in the, in, the, in the virtual Eagle Rock, that's right, you can just flap your arms and you can go right to the top. It's pretty cool. It's flapping like an eagle. All right. Some of you brought up about network security. So let's talk about that for a minute. If I control, in other words, my students make a sim like Eagle Rock, and I upload, I become in charge of it. And what that means is I have almost full network rights to it. So if at any time I'm getting concerned about who's going in there, I can shut it down. A couple of mouse clicks and nobody goes into it. Or I can limit it to just my friends or to a whitelist. Or I can open it up to everybody like I've done today. I can control who can res there. I can control who can speak there. So I really like that, that level of administrative control that you can get. And I've been told that you can give administrative rights to other people. I haven't played around with that yet, but that makes sense that you'd want to do something like that. Okay, maybe give rights to a teacher that's going to be taking the students in there. All right. Um, oh, let me go back one. Going too far. Clicking too fast. Oh, one. All right. So talk about network security. Yeah, right. You, it's like uh, the security orbs that you have here. Um, one of the things, too, that I think is really cool about ScienceSpace is that uh, if it runs on a, uh, a URL, then that means web filters are not going to block it. And that's huge in schools. I had a student try to log into one of her sims while standardized testing was going on. Those of you in schools know how much the tech services department locks systems down, and she was able to get in. That's a really good sign. Because the worst thing that can happen for virtual environments is a teacher tries it and it doesn't work. So we want a system like ScienceBase that allows the teacher to quickly and easily go in without calling the network engineer to open up the web filter for this URL or that one. Now, I don't know what it's going to open for all schools. I'm just saying it worked for mine. I would very much welcome that you try it at your school if, when it resumes and let me know if you have problems. Maybe we will have to open up a web filter, but at least in my school it was good. Um, this coming fall is going to be Earth Science Week, October, I think it's 14th through the 20th, and National Fossil Day within the United States. And I'm hoping to roll out Eagle Rock as a way of celebrating that um, to my students and teachers. Um, I've just done a big update. I'm waiting for it to be approved by Science Space, but it's got all the latest geology in it and information from the state. All right, the other thing that I want to put in there is problem-based learning. So when I went to Eagle Rock, you saw this big landslide of rocks coming down. And one of the things that I thought would be cool for students to do is, if you were to see this, what would you do if you worked for the Virginia Department of Transportation? You don't want those rocks going on the road where they could hit cars or whatever. And so uh, that's one of the things that I would throw out for students is, is what are some things you could do, like bring in a backhoe and, and rip all that stuff out. Um, but something for them to think about. All right, Eagle Rock is fully multiplayer like Science Space, and I think that it's going to lead to collaboration online in a safe environment. And for example, here I am giving a virtual field trip to a teacher on the other side of my state um, in Virginia Beach discussing the geology of, Rocky Ma of Eagle Rock. And let's see here. All right, um, right now, Science Space, the sims that I've thrown up are free to use. If you want to get your own Science Space account, you can get a free, what they call region or sim, whatever term you want to use on the live server. You can throw up whatever you want on the creator server. They limit you to 10 concurrent users on the live server, um, and the regions have to be 100, under 128 megs. Eagle Rock does that. Europa does not. Um, if you're going to use the WebGL, the web browser, they recommend keep them small, under 100 meg or even 50 if uh, you're going to be going that way. If you want more than that, um, what's the problem? Julandi is saying uh, this is, is not good. What's your problem? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Whew, worried there for a minute. Um, if, if you're saying, well, I need more regions or I need more CCUs or whatever, 
um, then uh, there is a pricing model. And right now, they're like 50% off. I just signed up to upgrade my regions to um, 30 concurrent users. And I think I'm up to 200, 512 megabytes of uh, storage per region. Um, yeah, it is small. Okay, and they're purposely keeping it small. They want you to go in and play with it. And then if you want to make something more advanced, then they're going to ask you to pay for it, which, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it costs them money for running servers and IT support and all that. And if you go to their, I put the URL for their pricing up there. If you go there, I think they're asking pretty reasonable. I'm paying 15 bucks a month and I'm up to, I think, 5, 12 megabytes. Somebody at Science Base, tell me if I'm wrong or go to the URL. But I thought the pricing was, was very realistic or very reasonable. Uh, it may go up. I don't know. But again, they're just giving you a little bit um, so that you can play around with it. And then if you need more, you have to pay for it. All right. Um, so like I said, um, did I go past? I'm, okay. Does anybody have any other questions before I, we do the field trip? Because we are right on top. And I appreciate those of you that um, that have already put some stuff in local. All right, so there's the URL if you want to go into it um, with the browser, sign.space slash location slash Eagle Rock. Take you a few minutes to get in there. Um, you do not have to have an account. Um, and you can pick a guest avatar, male or female, to go in. Um, if you download the science-based software and create an account, you can use that. Please make sure you don't click the button that says log on to preview server. That will take you to the creator server and you won't see anybody. Uh, well, I don't know if anybody's there now. So leave that unclicked because you want to go on the live server. Um, can everybody see behind me? What I did was a screen capture. Oh, before I say this, a few other things. Uh, you won't be able to get on the Freebird server. That's true, Galen. Um, if you do love, if you do run it on the web uh, browser, um, I would recommend Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Those are the ones that I've used that work pretty well. If you can use a wired connection, that works better than wireless. Close off your tabs, otherwise you might get error messages. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I am running Second Life, and I've got two other computers on SignSpace. I'm in both. Um, the Eagle Rock and Europa Simps on a 10 megabyte um, internet connection. So, like I said, the client works pretty well. So you'll need you know, and you, yeah, that's true, Kalen. If you try and go into the creator server, then um, you know you'll run into that. Um, I'm going to stay in Second Life. If you're having problems, just throw something in uh, local chat. And what I'd really like to know, obviously, I want you to go in, try the quest in Europa. Try Eagle Rock. Click on the rocks. I think more people are in Eagle Rock, so why don't we start with that one? But if you could just send me a net card, a note card in Second Life, um, just take a few minutes when we're done. Uh, maybe at um, was it 10:55 SLT time? Um, just tell me if you were able to get in. Were you using the web browser? Were you using the client? What problems you ran into? 